Good morning, children. Welcome to First Step Sunday School. As you can see, I'm doing it from my garden today because it's such a beautiful day uh, and it's too nice to sit inside. So we're gonna have our story out here today. But before we get started, we're going to um, do our hello song. So here goes, join in at home. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. It's good to see you here. Hello, Jude. Hello, Jude. Hello, Jude. It's good to see you here. Hello, Izzy. Hello, Izzy. Hello, Izzy. It's good to see you here. Hello, Violet. Hello, Violet. Hello, Violet. It's good to see you here. Hello, Fletcher. Hello, Fletcher. Hello, Fletcher. It's good to see you here. Hello, Logan. Hello, Logan. Hello, Logan. It's good to see you here. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Nikki. It's good to see you here. Hello, Isaiah. Hello, Isaiah. Hello, Isaiah. It's good to see you here. Hello, Portia. Hello, Portia. Hello, Portia. It's good to see you here. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. It's good to see you here. And hello to anyone else who's watching this morning. We are going to carry on with our story of Moses. And I've got some pictures to help me. Can you remember what happened last week in the story? This will remind you. Here we can see the picture of Moses in the basket. Do you remember his mum had to put him in a basket and set him down the river in order to save his life because the Egyptians were killing all the boy babies that were born to God's people. And this is his sister who's watching and she watches him and the king's daughter, the princess, comes down to the river and finds the baby and says that she's going to look after him and bring him up as her own son. And that's what happens. And Moses was given his name by the princess and he grew up in the palace and he became a very important person. He became a prince of Egypt. And I've got a picture here of him. Can you see him with his Egyptian clothes on looking very important? Now, as I said before, the king made the Egyptians build things for him and they had to make bricks uh, so that they could make these very important buildings. And they had lots of straw that they needed. And we can see in that picture that they were doing some of that building work. Now, jo uh, Moses was watching this. And one day when he was watching, he saw one of the soldiers beating one of God's people and really hurting him. And he looked about and he couldn't see anybody else there. And so he hit that soldier and made him stop. And when he hit him, he killed him. And so he was a bit frightened. So he buried the body and hid it so that nobody would know what he had done. But you know, things like that don't stay hidden and don't stay unknown. And it wasn't long before people began talking about what Moses had done and the king got to hear about it. And he found out that Moses had killed one of the Egyptians. And so he was going to send someone after uh, Moses to catch him and bring him back so that he would be killed too. But Moses grew frightened and he ran away. So he left Egypt and he went to a place out in the desert, to a place called Midian. And it was there that he was sitting down at a well uh, in Midian. And there were these seven women that came to the well to, to um, get water for the sheep that they were looking after. And some of the shepherds there were being mean to them. And Moses helped them. He got the water for them and he made sure that nobody gave them any trouble. 
And so they went back to their father and they told him about this man who had helped them. And the father said, bring him here, I want to meet him. And so they brought Moses to this man. And what happened was that Moses began to work for him. He looked after his sheep too. And the man was so pleased with Moses that he gave him one of his daughters um, in marriage. So Moses married one of his daughters and her name was, let me just check what her name was. Her name was Zipporah, that's right. Now, Moses had a job now. He wasn't a prince anymore. He was a shepherd and he was looking after his father-in-law's sheep. And one day when he was looking after the sheep, he was out near the desert and he saw something that was very strange. And so he went to see what it was. And do you know what it was? It was a bush burning on fire. I'm going to show you a picture here. Can you see? Oh, look, he's got goats with him today, not sheep. But he saw this bush burning and the bush was burning but it wasn't getting burnt up. There was lots of flames, but the bush wasn't being burnt up so that there was nothing left of it. And so Moses went over to have a look. And as he got near, he heard God speaking from the bush. And God was saying, Moses, take your shoes off because this is holy ground. And so Moses took off his shoes and he listened to what God want, was going to say. And God told him that he had a very, very special job for Moses to do. Moses was to go back to Egypt to stand before the king and was going to ask the king to let God's people go. Now, Moses didn't want to do this. He was frightened. He knew that the king would be after him because he'd done something bad. He knew that Egypt wasn't the best place for him to be and he was frightened and so he said to God you know I can't go who am I that I can go and stand before a king and God said to him you don't need to be afraid of who you are you just need to say that I'm coming from God who is the great I am and Moses said but um I can't talk very well I don't know what to say and God said to him, Moses, don't worry about what you've got to say because I'm going to send your brother Aaron with you and he's going to help you to know what to say to the king and how to say it. And so Moses said, OK, God, I will do what you say. And so he went back to Egypt. He told his father-in-law and his wife that he was going to go back to Egypt and do what God had asked him to do. And that's what he did. He went back and he met. Aaron and some of the, the leaders of, of the people, of God's people. And he told them that God was going to rescue them from the Egyptians because God had heard their crying and their moaning and their groaning. He knew that they were very unhappy and he wanted to do something to, to rescue them, to help them. Now, when Moses got to Egypt, he went to the king. Now, it wasn't the same king that was alive when Moses was growing up. It was a new king, and this one didn't know anything about Moses. So Moses stood in front of him and told him what God had said he had to do, that the king had to let God's people go, that he must let them go to the desert so that they could worship their God. And the king said, mm -mm, I'm not going to do that. So Moses held up his staff. I'm going to show you what a staff looks like. Look, it's a big wooden stick. He held it up and then he threw it on the ground and that stick turned into a snake. And the king was a bit surprised. And then the king's wise men and his magicians threw their staffs onto the floor and they turned into snakes. And the king thought, ha, oh, that's okay. But what happened was that Moses' snake ate up all the other ones. And the king was a bit worried and wondered what was going on. And so Moses said to the king, if you don't do what God wants you to do and let his people go, he's going to send some horrible things to Egypt, some horrible things. And, and eventually you're going to have to do what God says. And so the king said no. So Moses came back the next day. He went away and he came back the next day and he stood before the king and he said, 
king let God's people go and the king said no and so Moses said well you've said no so God's going to start doing what he said he would do and the first thing he's going to do is he's going to turn all the water into blood and so Moses went down to the river where all the Egyptians uh, got their water from and he touched the river with his staff and instead of it being water it turned to blood so nobody could drink the water nobody could walk, do their washing or wash their clothes because the water had turned into blood and the king said this is terrible turn it back and Moses said you've got to let God's people go and the king said oh I'll think about it okay turn the water back turn the the blood back into water and I'll think about it so Moses turned the water back uh, blood back into water and then the king changed his mind and said no I'm not going to let God's people go so God sent the second thing and this time it was a plague of what do you think this is gribbit 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 frogs frogs everywhere there were frogs in people's cupboards, frogs all over the land, all in people's houses, frogs everywhere. So many frogs and people were so fed up with it. Every time they went to do something, open a pot, there was a frog. Open the cupboard, there were frogs, everything. And everything was covered in frogs. And the people moaned at the king. And the king said, okay, okay, Moses. Send the frogs away and I'll think about what you said. And so Moses sent the frogs away. And the king changed his mind again and said, no, nope, I'm not going to let them go. So the next time Moses came to the king, he told him about the third thing that was going to happen. And he sent a plague of lice. Now lice are tiny, weeny little creatures that bite. And they were everywhere and people were itching they were in the beds, in the covers, and they were scratching because they got in their clothes. It was awful. And the people said to the king, you've got to do something about this. You've got to stop this because it's horrible. We keep itching everywhere. And so the king told Moses, okay, stop the lice and I will see what I will do. And so Moses stopped the lice and the king said, nope, I'm still not going to let God's people go. So God sent the next plague, and this was a plague of flies. Ooh, oh, that's a horrible big fly, that one. Isn't it horrid? But you know, flies are nasty things. They buzz around, they're dirty, they were horrid, horrid flies. And the people were fed up with them. And so they said to the king, you've got to get Moses to get rid of the flies. Do what he says. So the king said again to Moses, okay, get rid of them and I'll think about it. And so Moses got rid of the flies and then what did the king do? He changed his mind again. So the next thing that happened, God killed off all the livestock. So the livestock were the cows and the sheep and the animals that the Egyptians farmed and looked after and provided them with food. And still the king wouldn't let the people go. So God sent boils. Ugh, these were horrible, nasty things. Big lumps on people's skin that were very sore and horrid. And the people cried out to, to the king and said, Oh, this is so nasty. We really hate this. It's so painful. You've got to stop. Get Moses to stop this. And so the king did. And Moses sent the boils away. But still the king would not let the people go. So God sent hail. Now, you might remember what hail looks like. We've had lots of sun in, in this uh, lately. And so it's difficult to remember maybe what hail looks like. But if you can remember snowballs, hail's a bit like that. It's really hard snow that falls down from the sky. And this hail was as big as a man's hand. It was so big and so hard that it caused a lot of damage to crops and all sorts of things. But still the king didn't let the people go. And so the next 
plague that came was darkness. Everywhere was dark. And there was no sun at all. It was like it was nighttime all the time. But still, the king was stubborn and said no. And finally, Moses said, look, king, if you don't let God's people go, the last plague is going to be the worst. And the king said, I'm not going to let God's people go. And so Moses said, OK, king, this is what's going to happen now. Throughout the whole land of Egypt, all the firstborn will die. All the firstborn children, all the oldest children in each family will die. Not just the children, but with the cattle and with the sheep, the firstborn of everything will die. But still the king would not let God's people go. So Moses and Aaron went back to God's people and they said to the people, God is going to send this last plague. Now the other plagues hadn't touched God's people. They'd only affected the Israelite, uh, the Egyptians. But Moses was saying to these God's people that now they had to do something to protect themselves from this last plague. And so what they had to do was they had to take a lamb and they had to kill it. And then they had to use the blood of the lamb and they had to paint it on their doors. And so the angel that God was going to send to kill all the firstborn would know that the person living in that house was one of God's people and that he must not touch them. And so this is what God's people did. The Israelites did. They took a lamb. They painted the blood on the doorposts of the house. And then when the angel came to kill all the firstborns, the only people that didn't lose anyone was God's people. And you know what you could hear through the whole of Egypt? Crying and crying and crying. Because men... And women, mums and dads were sad because their children had died. And so Moses and Aaron went back to the king. And the king said, OK, I've had enough. This time you can go. You can take God's people and you can go to the desert like you've been asking. And so Moses got the people ready to do just that. And next week we're going to hear about how Moses and Aaron take the people into the desert and what happens next. Okay, children, that was quite a long story today. There was a lot to cover, but I hope you enjoyed it. Now, we are going to sing a song and then we're going to say our prayer before finishing. Okay, so here we go. We're going to sing God is Good to Me and we're going to sing it twice. Here we go. God is good to me. God is good to me, he holds my hand, he helps me stand, God is good to me, God is good to me, God is good to me, he holds my hand, he helps me stand, God is good to me. Okay, children, so hands together and eyes closed. Dear Father God, we thank you that you are good. And that you love us and want the best for us. Just like you wanted the best for your people. Thank you that you are still rescuing people and still looking after people. Thank you that you're looking after us at this difficult time. And we pray that you will continue to care for our families. In Jesus' name. Amen. So children from my garden, I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you next week. Um, have a good week and God bless.